together, everybody, and let's rejoice and be glad. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
Our scripture reading for today is coming from John, the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 30. And it reads thus, Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and that so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I have read in your hearing God's word, John the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Amen. Good morning, church. Can we bow our heads together this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come once more and again to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for this day, for this is the day that you have made, Father. It's a day we will rejoice in, Father, because you sent your son your son who died but yet lives. And with that, we give thanks. We ask, Father, that you look over us today as we come before you, Father, to worship you. We ask that you open our hearts, open our ears, and open our minds. Let the word we receive today be applied to our hearts, Father, so that we may go out and do your word, Lord. I ask mercy and grace this morning upon the Murray family and the loss of their loved ones and many others who have lost loved ones, Lord. I ask, Father, that you heal their hearts and bring them peace. I ask for peace over our land, Father, because there's so much war going on, and we need to have peace. Father, bless those who were on that bridge the other morning who lost their lives, Father. Strengthen their, fa their families, Lord, and help them through this time, and know that in time, it will be all right. Father, I come this morning with a special thanks a special thanks, Father, for Shanae. You know who she is, Lord. And I just thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for keeping her. I thank you, Father, for what you have prepared for her. And I thank you, Father, for her children, Lord. I ask, Father, that we all come together, Lord, and just love to be more, learn to be more caring, more loving, more forgiving, because those are the things that you have asked us to do. Father, again, I ask you to strengthen us, prepare our hearts as we get ready to move into another portion of your service. All these blessings I ask in your name. Amen. Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. Happy Resurrection Day. This time we welcome our ushers for our welcome followed by our announcements. Can we say amen again? Happy resurrection, everyone. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. I am so grateful to be here. Welcome to all of you, giving praise and honor to God, who's the head of my life. Respect to Pastor Carter, the other ministers in the pulpit, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I, would I hope you enjoy our worship service. Hopefully, there is something said or done that will make you return. On behalf of Pastor Carter, Sister Carter, and the New Hope family, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. And if you're looking for a church home, please consider New Hope. Thank you, and may God bless you. Good morning again. I come to you now with our weekly announcements. Health and wellness. WMU Department of New Hope Baptist Church. Screenings are available every Sunday after service or if needed during service. Please contact your ushers. Qu uh, quarterly toiletry drive, benefiting the nonprofit agencies in the community to support the unhoused and families living in local shelters in need of basic necessities. Please donate full-size products 
of these items, shampoo, lotion, toothbrush, baby wipes, conditioner, razors, mouthwash, um, bath tissue, snacks, deodorant, bars of soap, toothpaste, and sanitary items. You can also make a monetary donation that will go towards the purchase of the toiletry items. Please donate your items by Sunday, April 7th. Place your items in the bins located in the corner before entering the social hall. For questions, please contact Deaconess Anna Mitchell or Deaconess Nellie Williams. The Deaconess Board thanks you in advance for your support for such a needed service in our community. Amen. Teen and Young Adult Bible Study, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Dinner and child care is provided. Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Join us in the study of the Book of Romans. And we have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. It's all about Jesus, being an authentic church. Thank you and God bless.
because he lives. We go to him in prayer. Because he lives. Our prayer request, our prayer list this morning. We're praying for Pastor Carter and Lady Carter. We're praying for Pastor Murray's family. Lady Bridget Murray, we're praying for her and the Ocean View Baptist Church family this morning. We're praying for all pastors and ministers and all churches that are open in Jesus' name. We're praying for Sister Agnes Porter. We're praying for Sister Ilona Cooper, Sister Shia Rodriguez, the, Rod the Rogers family. We're praying for Renee and Tony, Brother John Paul, Deaconess Boone, Sister Margaret. We're praying for Deaconess Mitchell and her husband Bill Mitchell on the passing of his mother. The viewing will be on the 11th at Mission Memorial Park. The service will be on the 25th here at New Hope. We're also praying for Sister Vanessa in the choir today who's lost her sister. We're praying for her and the family, Lisa and Nikki Wright, Sister Carlos Crow, Mother Jackson, Mary Childs, Mother Aideen Martin, Sister Joanne White, and Sister Ethel is gonna be going under and having a surgery done. We're praying for you too, my sister. Deacon Robinson had requested prayer for, I just caught the first name, but the first name is Daniel. So we know him as Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth us. And we can go before him. So at this time, if you don't mind joining in with me as we go before the Lord, we're praying for our mothers here in the house and Deaconess Robinson's mother, Mother Davison, we're praying for her also. So if you don't mind joining me within prayer as we petition the Lord on behalf of these and others. So at this time, eternal God, our Father, we come before you humble as we know how, Lord. We come before you, a holy and a righteous God, to ask you, Father, to lay your hands on us once again. Not just lay your hands on us, Father, but heal us. Father, we need you. We can't make it without you. Some have come in today, Father, because of the date on the calendar, but Father, they need healing in their body, not just in their bodies, Father, but also in our minds. Father, we ask you because we know you can. We ask you because you've done it before. We ask you, God, because you are God and beside you there is no other. Father, there are those who are in the hospital, those who are behind prison walls, We've even passed some today on our way to your house, sleeping under bridges. But God, you have allowed us to come to your house and petition you and to ask you because of your grace and it is your mercy, Father, that we ask that you would touch. Lift up the hung down head. Mend the broken heart, Father. There are those who have lost loved ones. Father, they don't know to turn to the right or to the left, but Father, you said, cast all your cares upon you, for you careth for us. So God, here we are, we're asking you, God, yeah. one more time, just breathe on us. Yeah. Give us strength in our bodies, for we're weak yeah. and feeble. Father, we need you. Yeah. Lay your hands upon our pastor, Father, for you know the burden that he carries, Father. Yeah. But you equipped him, but Father, we still ask that you would strengthen him. Encourage his wife. Look upon the mothers in the house. Look upon those who had negative reports, Father. Oh, God, we thank you right now. We thank you because we need you. We thank you because we know you can. And we thank you because you have done it before. And you'll do it again. So right now, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to touch us again from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us for anything that would block you from touching us. Have your way in this place, Father. For the choir reminded us, you live, Father. And because you live, 
we can face tomorrow, Father. So God, have your way in this place. And God, with these hands you give us, we'll clap and give you praise. We'll clap our hands and give you thanks, for we ask this in the name of Jesus. And the people of God say amen. Put it on again. Tell the 
Lord, what his name is. You are the living Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call him. That's what we call you. Major Ford. Major Ford put on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are, you are the living Jesus, Word. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. Born in a manger. Major Ford put on a tree. You died to part of service that everybody can't participate in. If he's blessed you with anything and he's giving you something to give, this is that time that we give. Here at New Hope Baptist Church, we have three ways that we give. One, obviously, is with the ushers. And then the second is uh, you can mail in your, you can mail in your uh, offering, P.O. Box 834, Seaside, California, 93955. We also have uh, Giveify, which is uh, NHBC slash seaside.com, www.giveify.com, of course, New Hope Baptist Church. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, Lord, once again, we come to you, Lord, to say thank you, Father God. Lord, we should all be shouting because you did not die. As the kids saying, you got up, Father God, Lord. And, and Lord, we thank you for being a risen Savior, Father God. This ain't a funeral, Father God, but Lord, this is a, a hallelujah service, Father God. This is resurrection service, Father God. So Lord, we thank you right now, Father God. Lord, at this time right now, Father God, Lord, let us Put self aside right now, Father God, and let's just give, uh, give that be pleasing to your sight, Father God. Lord, if it's a dollar, it's a dollar, Father God. If you've given us more, then we give more, Father God. But Lord, we just give you all praise, honor, and glory. We bless. We ask that you bless those who uh, can't give and those who have to des- who ha- who do not have but have a desire to give, Father God. Lord, Lord, we praise you. We thank you right now, and all the things we ask in your presence, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
standing with us for the doxology. The words are on the screen. If you don't know the words, sing along and sing together. say thank you lord thank you so much for all the things you've given us thank you for this bringing us to this portion of the service father god lord lord we ask again that you uh, bless those who uh, gave and bless those who, had a, who could not give but had the desire to give father god lord we ask that you take the take what was given father god lord and you use it to the upbuilding of your kingdom father god lord lord all the things we ask and your precious son jesus name we pray amen <laughs>
Hallelujah. He is now experiencing what he's been preaching about. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. How many know that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints? Is there anybody here that want to give God praise right now? Anybody here want to thank God? Thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Pastor Murray. I thank God for the privilege of being in the house of prayer. Lord called him home on Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. I said the Lord called him home on Resurrection Sunday. Father in heaven, we thank you. Our souls cry out, hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that extended even to a wretch like we. Thank you for Jesus, precious son who came, died. He rose from the dead that we might have everlasting life. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that seals us until the day of redemption. Now, oh God, have mercy on us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, bless these your people, bless your preacher, bless your word. If there are any 
that don't know you, we pray that someone would come crying, what must I do to be saved? By the clapping of our hands, we bless you again. How many know we can't bless him enough? From the Gospel of John, 19th chapter, 30th verse. And also, I'm going to jump back to the Gospel according to Luke, 23rd chapter, verse 46. We find these words. John 19.30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now looking at Luke 23, Luke 23 verse 46, we find these words. Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme for this Resurrection Sunday service, by the way, we do this all the time. Our theme is, it started in eternity, it finished on Calvary. Calvary is the place where Jesus was crucified. Eternity is the place where Jesus was qualified. This is how Jesus got from eternity to Calvary. John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, or is God, The same was in the beginning with God. This same God, this same word who is God, who was in the beginning with God, came out of eternity, came through 40 and two generations, and entered into time and space. Matthew chapter 1 verse 17 says, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. 14 plus 14 plus 14 equals 42. From the time of Abraham, when God promised a Savior, until the time the Savior showed up, was 40 and two generations. Uh Jesus showed up on time at the appointed time. He was born of a virgin by the power of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter one, verse 21, the angel says about this virgin whose name is Mary, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people Mm -hmm. from their sins. John, the gospel writer, says in John chapter 1, verse 14, that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So according to the preordained, perfect will of God, the word who is Jesus came to save sinners like you and me. Jesus says in John chapter 3, verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus came to save us from the penalty and the punishment of sin. And in our text today, you probably recognize our scripture as those which are included in what is known as the last seven sayings or the last seven words of Jesus. These last seven sayings of Jesus give us insight into his thought process as he is literally in the process of dying on the cross. Jesus with nails in his hands and with nails in his feet is hanging on the cross between heaven and earth. For six long hours, Jesus endured 
the cross. For six long hours, he endured the agony of the cross. And in the process of those six hours, while Jesus is literally dying on the cross, we see him in these last seven sayings declaring the purpose for which he must sacrifice his life to restore sinful humanity. I'm talking about you and me back to a holy God to restore us back to a holy God. Yeah. We could not save ourselves. Turn yeah. to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we could not save ourselves. We could not save ourselves from the punishment of hell. But Jesus sacrificed his life to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Someone ought to say amen. So this is what he went through explained in his own words. Amen. The first thing, Luke 23, verse 34, Jesus says, while he is dying on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The context here, Jesus forgives the Roman soldiers who beat him, who, who battered him, who bruised him, placed a crown of thorns on his head, then they crucified him. Yeah, yeah. Jesus forgave all those involved in his death. And by the way, how many know you were involved in the death of Jesus? Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. don't hear me, y'all don't hear me. We were involved in the death of Jesus. We were not there at the cross, but our sins were there. Yeah. Yeah. Second saying, second saying, Luke 23, verse 43, Jesus says, today, you shall be with me in paradise. Yeah. For context, Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Uh -huh. One thief on the left, and the other thief on his right. Yeah. And it is believed it was the thief on the left while dying on the cross, he rejects Jesus while the thief on the right, while being in the same predicament, he receives and accepts Jesus, causing Jesus to announce and make him a promise, today you will be with me in paradise. Third saying, third saying, John 19, verse 26, 27, Jesus says, woman, Behold your son. And to John, the beloved disciple, he says, Behold your mother. From the cross, Jesus entrusts the care of his mother into the hands of John, the beloved disciple. What a, watch this, what a tremendous blessing. Y'all don't hear me. What a tremendous blessing. What a tremendous honor and responsibility that he gives to John for saying, Matthew 27, verse 46, Jesus says, my God, my God, my God, my God. why have you forsaken me? As Jesus is dying on the cross, by now it has been close to six hours he's been hanging on the cross. As death approaches, Jesus in his humanity is experiencing all the pain and agony of the cross. Not just the physical pain, but also he feels the pain of abandonment by his father, and it causes him to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And yet Jesus knows he must endure the cross. Fifth saying, John 19, verse 28, Jesus says, I thirst. Keep in mind now, that Jesus, while being 100% God, right. is 100% man, right. all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is experiencing everything as a man. Yeah. Yeah. He is in physical pain. Yeah. Yeah. He is in mental pain. Yeah. Yeah. He is in emotional pain. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of all that, he's thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. But instead of giving him water to drink, uh -huh. they give him vinegar, they yeah. give him sour wine, uh -huh. which does not quench the thirst, but it makes it even worse. It yeah. makes him yeah. more thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. They're not trying to help Come Jesus. On, right. Six saying, in our primary text, Jesus says in John 19, 30, it is finished. Yeah. Oh, good God of Marty. Yeah. As I read that, I think about Pastor Murray. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. He says, it is finished. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus' suffering mm -hmm. is almost over. Yeah. His assignment is coming to a close. Yeah. He has done what the Father right. has sent him to do. Yeah. He says, it is finished. Yeah. Three words that are three of the most powerful, precious, 
and profound words ever spoken in the history of mankind. These three words speak of the closure of a predetermined plan ordained by God himself from the foundation of, how many know that you were included from the foundation of the world? Before the foundation of the world, this plan was determined. Yeah. This plan was a promise yeah. that came out of eternity yeah. and entered into time. Yeah. This was a pre-planned appointment with the cross. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, by the way, you know how FedEx and you know how UPS, how they track their packages from one destination right. 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 to another destination? Right. Yeah. 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 Well, by the same token, God tracked the promise right. from one generation to the next generation. This promise had no chance of getting lost in the process because God was tracking the promise. Watch this. The promise was spotted in Isaiah 7:14, where Isaiah says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name. How many know God was tracking the promise? Yeah, yeah. Jesus is that son who was also the word that was in the beginning with God. And since he was in the beginning with God, that means he was also on the planning committee that would send himself to the cross. The reason for the cross was to pay the debt that was owed by sinful humanity. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he's talking about me. Without the cross, without the cross, there is no salvation. Without the Christ shedding his blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. He paid the debt yes, that we owe. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus did not, watch this, Jesus did not go to the cross under duress. Yeah. The Father did not force the Son to go to the cross, but Jesus volunteered for the cross. He says in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus volunteered for the cross. Started in eternity. He entered into time and space. Came through 40 and two generations. Born in Bethlehem. Born of a virgin. Wrapped himself in human flesh. Grew up, became a man. He was beaten, battered, and bruised. But he kept his date with the cross. They nailed him to that old record cross. Put nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. For six long hours, he hung on the cross yeah. in agony. Uh -huh. This was a pre-planned appointment. Yes, and when this appointment was completed, Jesus said, it is finished. Yes. Three powerful words that would usher in the death of a savior on, and open up the door of salvation. Yeah. Seventh saying, yeah. Jesus says, Luke 23, 46, Father, into your hands, yeah. I commend yeah. my spirit. This is what Jesus experienced yeah. all day Friday yeah. on the old rugged cross. Yeah. That was Friday, yeah. but Sunday was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus died yeah. on a hill called Calvary. Yeah. He died for yeah. your sin. Yeah. Yeah. He died for my sin. Yeah. Yeah. To those who rejected him, his death would look like defeat. But to us who accept him, his death would carry victory yeah. in the name. How many know you got victory? I said, how many know you got victory in the name of Jesus? He died. I said he died on Calvary. He died like a savior. He died like a lamb. He 
he died on Friday, yeah. laid him in a borrow uh -huh. tube, was there Friday night, yeah. was there Saturday morning, uh -huh. was there Saturday afternoon, yeah. was there Saturday night, yeah. but early Sunday morning, I said early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. It started in eternity. It finished on Calvary. And if you believe on the name of Jesus, because it finished on Calvary, you get to be a recipient of everything heaven has to offer. I can just imagine, I can just imagine in my mind, I can just imagine in my mind when Murray saw the Lord for the first time face to face. He said, hallelujah. And so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what brought you here today. I don't know if the calendar brought you here today. I don't know if it's because it Easter it brought you here today. But whatever reason you came, you don't want to leave here without Jesus. It started in eternity. A plan was made by God himself before, before the beginning of time. And what you need to understand that you were part of that plan. Yeah. That if you don't accept Jesus, you shall not have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, I don't care if you bought a new hat for this occasion, I don't care if you bought a new suit and a new tie, I don't care if you went and got your hair did. If you don't know Jesus, you will not have everlasting life. But if you do know him, how many don't mind standing and blessing the Lord? For the marvelous things he has done. One day, I said one day, someday, all of us are going to go by way of the grave. But if you don't know Jesus, you shall not have everlasting life. But if you know him, go ahead and bless God for the wonderful things. If you don't mind, remain standing, and those of you who are sitting, if you don't mind standing, I'm going to open the doors to the church. The word came straight, came in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. This time, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's simple. It's simple as the ABCs. A, you must admit that I don't know him. I am a sinner. A, I admit, Lord. B, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is a remedy for sin. B, I believe. And then C, the Bible says you must confess him. You must believe in your heart, open your mouth, and confess him as Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9 and 10. And the Bible declares if you do that, you are saved. Today, if I was not saved, if I had not done that, after this word that was just declared, what he did for you and what he did for I, I would have come today and take those easy steps. And as pastor reminds us always, don't worry about the D through Z. He'll walk with you through that. Amen. Is there one that would come? There's no shame in this. I challenge you. I ask you to come today while the blood is running warm in your veins. Tomorrow's not promised, and yesterday is gone, and all you have is right now. Right now, if I didn't know him, I'd come. Right now, if I stood in the need of prayer, I would come right now. If you broke in fellowship with him, I would come right now. Resurrected Sunday meant he got up. Would you come? Don't let the enemy trick you out of what God has for you. There's room for you, just for you, if you'd come on this day. There's someone else. He says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. 
Maybe you want to come and stand for someone, a family member, a neighbor, a child. Would you come? There's room. Come on, come on, come on. There's someone else who needs to come. There's someone else who needs to come. There's room. Come on. Come on. Sunday. So y'all don't hear me. Because if you heard me, you wouldn't have been that quick to clap. The Lord let us live to see another resurrection Sunday. The Lord gave us mercy. He gave us mercy to see another resurrection Sunday. Not because any of us are that good. Not because any of us deserve it, but only because of his grace and mercy are you standing here right now. But you need to understand, listen to me, you need to understand, quit playing with God. Quit playing with God. Where was that? Where that barge crashed into that bridge in Baltimore. 1.30 in the morning. Who would have thought they would have died by a barge crashing into a bridge? Six people died on that bridge. And I don't know the condition of their soul. I pray and I hope that they were saved, but they would have never expected that. You can walk out of this door and step out on the curb and be gone today. You don't know if you're going to get another Resurrection Sunday. 
I'm talking about on the calendar. All you have is right now. So if there's anybody here within the sound of my voice, whether you're in the sanctuary or you're watching on live stream, don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. I see folk standing around here with tears in your eyes, and I watched you when you came in. You were whispering and all that kind of stuff, and now you got tears in your eyes because it's set in on you how real this is. Tomorrow's not promised. But one thing that is promised is everlasting life. And so we extend that invitation. We extend that invitation. If you are not saved, and you know you're not saved, Accept Jesus now while the blood is still running warm in your vein. Is there anybody in here that knows you are not saved? Everybody in here say, if you're saved, raise your hand. I better see everybody's hand up. How do you know you're saved? I ask you. How do you know you're saved? Say it. What is it? You, you don't. I don't want to know the numbers. Quote the verse. That it. Romans ten and nine. You pass. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you did that, raise your hand. Raise the other hand and give God praise. <laughs> Reverend Kidd is going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we all seem to have raised our hands. We acknowledge that we are your children under the gracious tree of life. But Father God, the creator of our being, you know what's in our hearts. We seek redemption, Father, through your beloved son, Jesus Christ. And the only way that I can ask for that redemption, Lord, is if you dig off into my heart and you look at your beloved son, Jesus, it is only through him that will acknowledge, Father, he is, she is our child. Watch over us, Father. You sent the Holy Ghost, Father, to give us a certain unction. And this day, Father, we look for the unction of salvation. Those of us, Father, who raise their hands, but they're really not sure. We pray, Father, that the flame of understanding, the flame of resurrection, the flame of salvation, the flame of understanding, the flame of reconciliation be upon their spirit. Today, we don't know about the next 20 minutes, Father. All that we seek, Lord, is that all of us who claim to be children of you, Father, the Most High God, who received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, Forgive them, forgive us of our past sins and look at us on this day, Father. Not the calendar day, but on the day that was asked to their spirit, are they children of you, the Most High God? And I say, Father, we are, I am, through, 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 through my eyesight. I see everyone raise their hand again, Father, Look into the hearts of the many. Separate us, Father, from those that don't want to be saved. Separate us, Father, from those that want to know what they must do to be saved. And look upon those that are saved, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, not your messenger's name, not your speaker's name. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father.
Amen. Amen. Okay, so before we move, before we move, before benediction, here's the next thing. If, if you are saved, but you don't have a church home, you need a church home. I'm not saying you have to come to New Hope. There's numerous churches. We can recommend churches for you. But if you don't have a church home, you need a church home. And so you can talk to any one of these deacons, preachers, uh, deaconesses, and give them your information, and we can get you, make you a member of New Hope Baptist Church. If you don't want to be here, we'll recommend a church. Stop treating a church like a truck stop. In and out, pulling in when you just uh, feel like it. Stop treating the church like a truck stop. This is the house of God. How many know you need the house of God? And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. And they all sang together. God bless you and God keep you. Amen, amen. Hey, y'all, we do have one. Can I, can, I, can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention?